The US is now $31.5 trillion in debt. That's $94,000 per citizen and $246,000 per taxpayer. And those figures are actually now over the legal debt limit approved by Congress of $31.381 trillion. In other words, the US cannot borrow any more money. But the US budget is not balanced. Every month, the government spends more than it brings in in taxes. Thus, without raising the debt, the US will eventually default and not be able to pay back bondholders. And according to politicians, that has never happened before in history, except that it actually has, four times. But you know, once was because of the Civil War, and then a few other times with very specific gold and silver bonds, so I guess that doesn't count, right? Anyway, in this video, we are going to tell you how the debt ceiling came to be a thing, what would happen if the US were to actually default on its debt, and what politicians are trying, or not trying in some cases, to do about it, in order to avoid that default. This is Dirty Money. The modern debt ceiling as we know it was adopted by Congress in 1939. This was the amount of money that the US federal government cannot go above, and at that time, it was set at a cute $45 billion. That's billion with a B. Then World War II happened, and Congress raised it to $300 billion, and then after the war, lowered it back down, first to around $250, and then by the early 50s, up to $275 billion. In 1953, the first debt ceiling crisis happened. Treasury Secretary George Humphrey stood before the House Ways and Means Committee and explained that he would need to borrow up to $12 billion in additional funds before the end of the year to keep the lights on at the government, and that the debt ceiling would need to rise above $275 billion. President Eisenhower asked Congress for a $15 billion extension on the debt ceiling. The House quickly approved it, but the Senate did not, and that left the US government with a maxed out credit card and no way to increase the credit limit. They had to figure out ways to cope, which, to be honest, is what most individuals would do anyway. You'd look at your spending and be like, maybe that Gucci bag I bought last month wasn't such a good idea, and you'd probably sell it to pay off some debt. Well, the government tried. They took what they called every possible step to reduce expenditure. This included slowing down payments on federal contracts, aka paying people late, encouraging defense contractors to borrow from private banks rather than rely on government grants, aka get down to payday loans to get the capital you need to build those fighter jets for us. And then finally, they monetized about $500 million worth of gold that was left over from an allocation in the Gold Reserve Act of 1934. This involved a bit of Babylonian money magic, issuing certificates for gold in the government's general fund, and then depositing those certificates with the Federal Reserve, and using the resulting credits to purchase $500 million worth of treasury notes. Nothing really changed hands except on paper. These measures worked for a while, but finally in 1954, the debt ceiling did have to be raised. And once the US government discovered that you could just increase the credit limit on the national credit card, they did it again, and again, and again. In fact, Congress has now permanently raised the debt ceiling 78 separate times since 1960. The most recent time was in December 2021, and that was by $2.5 trillion. And now here we are again, hitting the US's debt limit. And Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen recently wrote to the House of Representatives explaining that she is now taking extraordinary measures, cutting investment in the Civil Service Retirement Fund and beginning a debt issuance suspension period. These measures should allow the US government to keep functioning until summer 2023 with the current debt ceiling, but after that, it will have to be raised or the budget slashed. But what if it isn't raised and the US really defaults on its debt? For the first, I mean the fifth time in history. Well, according to the White House, the dollar would devalue as other countries lost faith in the US. The country's credit rating would be downgraded, interest rates would rise on pretty much every type of loan product you can think of, from mortgages to car loans to credit cards, and the government would have a hard time meeting its financial obligations. For example, social security checks for retirees may be delayed or never arrive at all, and numerous other financial assistance programs like Medicaid, children's health insurance, etc. would be affected. So you would think the US government would be scared and ready to get to work in raising the debt ceiling. Hmm. No, not really. 
You see, many politicians think that the debt ceiling always gets raised in the end and it will happen eventually, perhaps after a compromise is reached, like Obama did in 2012, making spending cuts when a Republican Congress demanded it. But the two parties have never been more opposed. The Democrats' strategy would be to raise the debt ceiling without any concessions and blame Republicans for blocking it if they fail. The Republican strategy will be to view the Democrats, the party that holds the Senate and the presidency, as the party with more to lose if they fail and use the debt ceiling as a negotiating tool for spending cuts or policy changes. The ball is really in Republican House leader Kevin McCarthy's court and Republican Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell has pointed to him to negotiate the debt ceiling and spending cuts with President Biden. Early indications point to Republicans voting for a temporary lifting of the debt limit to line up the deadline for permanently raising it with the end of the year and a more realistic timetable for Republicans to push spending cuts through Congress. So what do you think? Is this a reasonable negotiation or is it dirty money? Leave your comments below. Please subscribe to the channel for more financial mini documentaries twice a week, and we'll see you next time.